Hello everyone and welcome to the next part of the Red Embrace Hollywood LP. We are doing visits right now. We're going to visit Heath at his bar. Let's see how it works out. I'm not sure how this whole thing works, so I'm hoping that I'm not making mistakes here. Deciding to pay Saturnalia a visit, I hopped into a taxi to drive downtown. A warm, nostalgic atmosphere welcomed me back into the bar. I glanced around at the knight's patrons and noticed two interesting groups standing in different spots. A cluster of young-looking vampires by the bar, giggling and restlessly shifting in their seats. And some reserved, well-dressed Iskari murmuring in, in a quiet corner, looking like they didn't want to be disturbed. Heath was there too, lingering quietly behind the bar as he wiped out a glass. Approach the young group. Talk to Heath. We're here for Heath. <laughs> I stepped up to the bar waiting to catch Heath's attention. He stayed lost in thought for a short while longer, his glazed eyes staring off at nowhere in particular. But soon enough, our gaze is finally met. Almost instantly, Heath broke into a smile, putting down the glass and stepping towards me. Antonio! You came by alone this time, hmm? That makes things a little more comfortable, I think. Hello, Heath. How have you been doing? Hi, just thought I'd stop in. Hmm. I want to talk about some things. Uh, hello, Heath. How have you been doing? I've been doing just fine, thank you. No, that's not completely true. I've been a little worried about you. Me? Little old me. I'm sure you're still adapting to our world, trying to understand all its confusing people and parts. No matter how strong you are, it's hard not to feel overwhelmed sometimes. So if there's anything you want to ask me, Antonio, please do. Well, questions about you. What are what are your house powers like? Are our house powers like? Have you ever turned another vampire? Is there meaning behind your necklace? Or how do you normally feed? What are your house powers like? Well, I have a little skill in glamour. The scary ability to take on someone else's appearance. But I've never been able to use type hypnosis. Maybe it's because I'm still young, or I just don't have the talent for it. He's let out a small self-deprecating -de chuckle. Like you, I didn't have a mentor when I turned when I was turned. Everything I've learned I've had to teach myself, mostly. Glamour came to me quickly, but every time I used it, I get this strange feeling afterwards, so I don't practice it often. That's all there is. I don't think of my other powers very much. I prefer not to use them. I think, you know, we understand. Like, we sort of lose ourselves when we use our powers, so it's sort of like something that we don't want to use that often. He rubbed a finger along his cheek, gently shaking his head. Let's have you ever turned another vampire? Keith quickly shook his head, looking a little distressed at the very thought. No, never. I don't ever want to either. I'm going to take somebody's life and then pulling them into our world forever. I just couldn't. A small shudder ran through him. What helps you find comfort after the vampire? Other people. Being around other people, I think. Both humans and vampires. Seeing humans still living their happy lives here, that makes me feel warm. And seeing people in our society, our version of normal, living out theirs. I just don't like being alone for too long. It makes me start to wonder what I really am. What we really are. But being around others makes me feel less different. Calmer, I think. That's probably why I still run this bar. Is there a meaning behind your necklace? Yes, I used to be religious. I think I still am. It helps remind me that I'm not alone. Oh. His fingers stripped up to the necklace, lightly tracing along the metal with the reverent touch. This necklace was a Christmas gift from my mother. I always treasured it. Oh god. Oh god. His tr I'm pretty sure his route is gonna fucking destroy me <laughs> when I play it. I'm gonna be crying all the time. But it doesn't have any meaning beyond that. 
I'm sorry if the story isn't as exciting as you hoped. Breath out a faint laugh, his hand shifting back to his scarf. How do you normally feed? I drink from glasses as much as I can, but sometimes there are willing donors who come around. I just don't like it, reading from them very often. It feels so inhuman. But we're not human. Feeding's a part of our nature. I know what you mean, I feel similarly. I see. Interesting. I think for Antonio it's like, yeah, I, I get that, but I also see that there's a necessity in trying to feed from a human, um, not that frequently, but frequently enough that we don't fall into temptation, I guess. I know what you mean. I feel similarly. Similarly. Really. I shouldn't be surprised. You have such a sweet heart. Stop it. Thank you, Antonio. It makes me happy knowing I'm not alone. Joke. <laughs> Let's talk about someone else. You and Randall. I want to know what's up with that. Mm, he hates me. The only reason he ever comes into the bar is to spend time with other in the bar. But when he doesn't ignore me, he's giving me disgusted looks. We used to deal with each other a little better, but over time, we grew further and further apart. The stronger Randall got, the more he seemed to hate me. I don't know if it's because of the war, or because we came to understand each other's natures more. We're just total opposites. I think you can find common ground if you really tried. Or do you have anything- do you know anything about his past? We're not gonna do that. I think you could find common ground, if you really tried. He doesn't want to try, Antonio. It isn't like I hate him or bear any grudges against him. But it's alright, some people just don't mix. What's your relationship with Marcus? That's really sad though, I really want them to be friends. <laughs> But I could see it like it's sort of like yeah, it's Randall's it's Randall's thing, like Randall has something going on there. I might actually pressure him to tell me what's up when I when we go visit him. Ow. Ow. Oh god, I elbowed my desk. Uh what's your relationship with Marcus? We've never really gotten along You don't get along with anyone apparently. <laughs> We've never really gotten along, Marcus and me. His philosophy. I hope I'm saying that later. His philosophy is just so dark and cynical. I'm sure you've already seen it for yourself. He and I aren't enemies, but I know he doesn't like me, and that makes it very uncomfortable for me to be around him. Do you know how old he is? We don't even know how old he is. He told us his, his thing for how old he is. He's just like, I'm as old as however you think I am. For all we know, he could just be five years as a vampire, and so it's like, me. Is there a reason why he doesn't like you? He never mentioned anything directly, if that's what you mean. Marcus isn't outright abrasive like Randall is, but he's always a little cold to me. Cherise works with him sometimes, though, so I can deal with him when he's around. He attempted to put on a smile, but it turned out more like a grimace. What do you think of Cherise? Cherise is a very strong woman, one of the strongest I've ever met. His response was a little slow, words more cautious than normal. But sometimes I think her strength, the way she's so determined to make a safe, lawful society for us, is her biggest weakness. She focuses on the whole instead of parts, the society instead of the individual people inside of it. The good of the many over the few, so she doesn't let herself get attached to people easily, or tries not to. Is she attached to you? Do you like working for her? Hmm. I like working for a good cause. Every job can be frustrating at times. I tell myself that a lot these days. He thought out a short laugh about something else. That's all for now, I think. So soon? Hmm. No, but really, thank you for coming to talk with me. Stay safe, Antonio. God. Reaching to pull out a cigarette, he slowly turned away. Approach the young group. We have that option, let's go. <laughs> Curious, I started wandering towards the young group of vampires nearby. As I got closer, I realized they were whispering and pointing at a man from the down bar. He was huddled off by himself, shifting uncomfortably as he nursed his drink. Hey! Are you Antonio? Who are you? Who? Everyone knows who I am. It's sort of like unsettling, even though it's like a 
part of the thing. One of the vampires suddenly reached out to tap my arm, offering me a hopeful grin. Could he introduce us? Please? He nodded towards the man who was slowly shrinking further away. Who is he? Yeah, could you? Please? We're from San Fran, but we've heard so much about him, and we know we are friends. We did our research. Two other vampires chimed in eagerly. Uh, I've never seen him before in my life. Sure, I'd be happy to. Or I'd rather not, actually. Who is it? Who is at the corner? I don't know who it is. I don't know who it is, though. They're so eager, and I hate it. Because it makes me want to do things for them. <laughs> he seems, uh, I've never seen him in my life. Haha. <laughs> Why are you acting like you don't know? I think he's just testing us or something. Come on, let's go over. The vampires who trapped my arm now started to pull me impatiently towards the man. Um, um. Oh, hello. Oh my god, you're cute. When we stepped up beside him, the man would luckily turn to, to face me. Please, I think there's been a... Oh my god. Oh my god, he's talking to us. Marcus is talking- Oh my god. Face palm. Face palm. Marcus is talking to us. I think I'm gonna faint. The moment he opened his mouth, two of the vampires let out excited squeals. Ah! Ah. I see the confusion here. Yes, I am Marcus, but it's spelled with a C, not a... Can I have your autograph, please? How do you know Antonio? Did you sire him? Oh my god. Actually, we don't even... Is Antonio the only one who can melt your icy exterior? Oh, no! Why do you keep pretending you're not Marcus? We know who you are. Before I know it, we were surrounded by a chattering group. They seemed completely convinced that this man, Marcus, was actually Marcus. <laughs> oh, Marcus. <laughs> Marcus threw me a- It's my phone. Please hold. A few minutes later. Marcus threw me a plaintive look, all but wailing, please help me with his eyes. Listen everybody, I know Marcus. This man isn't Marcus. <laughs> dot dot dot. Marcus is just being shy. Well, he'll open up if you keep asking him things. This is Marcus, not Marcus, you fools. <laughs> Listen, everyone, I know Marcus, and this man isn't Marcus. Oh man, we know what you guys are up to. Marcus always posts tricks on people. Oh my god. Yeah, you're not fooling us, but nice try. Hey, don't let him slip away. Run, Marcus, run! Their attention shifted away from me. The Marcus fan club swarmed Marcus like flies, clearly convinced he was the real deal. They pestered him with a constant stream of questions, asking about everything from his political views to whether he thought the Beatles' white album was better than Abbey Road. Oh my god. The quiet, fumbling replies he gave were very un marcus like but none of the vampires seemed to notice or care. Some of them shoved things into his hands to autograph, where he reluctantly etched an M followed by an ambiguous squiggle. <laughs> Judging from Marcus's reaction, Tonight wasn't the first time this kind of thing had happened. And from the defeated look on his face, I figured it probably wouldn't be the last. Eventually the group started trickling off, wandering back down the bar. They were apparently satisfied with catching the glimpse of Marcus in the wild, and I heard snippets of the delighted gushing as they walked away. I am so sorry. Like a wilted plant, Marcus drooped back against the bar, visibly exhausted. You know, Los Angeles is really a charming place. I like it here. The atmosphere is fantastic. But as my luck would have it, I also share a name and house with the most infamous vampire in the city. Oh, so you're a Bogotha. That's interesting. He let out a resigned sigh, rubbing two fingers against his temple. It would be so nice to have a peaceful time at bars, enjoying my night like any other average Joe. Joe. Is that such an impossible dream? Maybe I should try going by Mark instead. After mumbling wistfully to himself for a few moments, Marcus glanced back at me, clearing his throat. Oh well, thanks for trying to clear things up anyway. I'll let my friends know you're not just out to make people fly is more difficult. I guess that happens pretty frequently. Or have you ever met the real Marcus? Yeah, 
have you ever met the real Marcus? No, never once in my life. Which makes it worse somehow. He grumbles under his breath, but the passive way of someone who wasn't up to fighting fate. From what I know, the real Marcus likes to pull pranks a lot. So every time I say I'm not Marcus, they think I'm just pulling I'm just playing around. It's usually not that bad, just a little inconvenient, but then other times. With a faint, flustered cough, Marcus stared very intently into his class. You know the kind of shop Marcus runs, right? Yep, I do. Well, sometimes his fans decide to give me gifts that match the store's aesthetic. I can deal with signing the occasional t-shirt, but when somebody shoves a, a cat tail attached to a plug into my hands at the drugstore, things have gone a little too far. Maybe you should try and clear things up with the real Marcus, or you have my sympathies, or... At this point, I think you should just embrace it. <laughs> Maybe you could try and clear things up with the real Marcus? I've tried, but I can't get in contact with him. And you know, a part of me can't shake the suspicion that he's actually helping spread the fake identity. I... I see that happening. As Marcus shared his... Lemon... Lemon... Patience with me, I spread a tomb of art coming from the bathroom hall nearby. The next moment they froze, staring at us intently. Hey, is that? Holy crap, is that Marcus? No, it's not! Run right away, Marcus! <laughs> Their eager grasp sprang through the air. Oh boy. Lord have mercy. Like he'd just been shot from a cannon, Marcus turned and bolted for the exit, leaving his half-finished glass of blood behind. One of the Mavar ran after him, giggling delightedly. This is like a real kind of like look at how other people, or how some other people look at Marcus. Which is like hilarious. <laughs> and just like that, I was left alone in the bar once more. I'm leaving. <laughs> Bye, Heath. Like a waving. That was crazy. <laughs> I left the bar, it's quiet ambiance, returning to the street. I'll visit the beach house. No, you're the beach house. I'm glad. Is there a limit? I'm hoping there isn't a limit for this. Because that means I can actually go to everyone. <clears throat> I had my driver take me back to the beach, deciding to stop by Randall's place. Retracing my steps from the other night, I found it again easily. Though the strong scent of Mavar was enough of a trail on its own. The door was already unlocked, so I let myself in. I hope not when sorry for for disturbing. <laughs> Inside a diverse blend of vampires filled the open space, chattering and laughing over drinks. I didn't see Randall anywhere, but I did spot Jack lurking off by himself. Talk to Jack, mingle with the other Mavar. Let's talk to Jack. I wandered over to Jack, whose stocky figure stood silently near the doorway. His head was lowered, and I watched him idly fiddle with his jacket zipper for a solid minute before he finally noticed me. Oh. Hey, Antonio. He blinked a little, shrinking back a step out of reflex. I, uh... I want to say sorry again, for the garage. It's really no big deal, don't worry about it. Or, why you act so differently back there? It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Phew. Glad you're not pissed off or anything. I'm new as hell, and I don't really know what the fuck I'm doing, so... I just thought the best thing to do was, you know, throw my weight around and act tough. He sank back a little more into his hoodie shadow, clearing his throat. Hell, I'm probably the newest vampire in the cover besides you. Been under a year, I think. The guy who turned me was a... Uh, my dealer, actually. Not one of Randall's clan, just a loner. Yeah, he had a strong hatred for humanity, that guy. Sold drugs to try and get people to fuck themselves up, not for the money. I only bought pot from him, but I guess me not falling for his crack deals pissed him off. Cause one night, when he was real mad about something I said, he grabbed me and turned me right there. You're speaking about him in past tense. That's horrible. What did you say that made him so angry? Oh, that's horrible. Hmm, that's horrible. I mean, at least he didn't kill me. 
Don't know if it would have been better or worse, but I guess I got time to figure that out. Huh. Anyway, he, uh, he's not around anymore. He got too ballsy one night and wandered pretty far into this car territory. And even though he wasn't with Randall, most people just figured he was. Oh no, that's dangerous. So a couple of patrolling Iskari caught up with him, thought he was a spy, and they took his heart out. At least that's what I heard anyway. <laughs> Can you tell I'm losing my voice? <laughs> Do you ever wish he was still around? Or it sounds like he had it coming, to be honest. Or I wonder what he was doing in Iskari, ter Iskari territory. Or he was doing up in Iskari territory. Yeah, I don't know. Probably trying to find more people to sell shit to. Jack shook his head, letting out a long, glum sigh. Anyway, uh, I should get going. I'm heading out to get some info on, his, on an Iskari base. So, watch your ass out there, and don't do anything Randall wouldn't do. New catchphrase. Just made that one up. <laughs> yeah, okay. Bye. <laughs> I'm like, you're awkward. <laughs> his jaw climbs in a blend of embarrassment and anxiety. Jack carried outside, throwing a brief glance back at me. Mingle with the other Mavar. I began drifting between the clusters of my bar, looking for a conversation to step into. Nobody seemed to know what to make of me, and most of the looks I got were confused, curious, or downright suspicious. For my first impression on them, I decided to act warm and friendly, neutral and curious, cold and collected. Would warm and friendly be too weird? That is sort of us. It's between the first two, warm and friendly and neutral and curious. Which is true. Neutral and curious. Rather than coming off too strong, I stayed fairly mild in my responses, mostly asking them of our questions about themselves. As the night went on, their weariness around me didn't exactly fade away. But some of them started opening up, including me little by little in their discussions. By the time I spoke in with most of the vampires who'd seen Will in the chat, I felt like I knew the clan a little better. They were about as diverse as a group as any other I've ever seen, and beyond their shared house, there was one thing that united them. The respect for Randall. All the Mabar obviously admired him, and I heard stories about how he helped so-and-so's brother or inspired somebody to ditch their evil boss and become a free, free spirit. Some of their tales seemed too heroic and exaggerated to be true, but the Mavar obviously believed them. And it seemed like the belief gave them all confidence. I guess we're leaving. How wonderful. Slipping out of the beach house, I made my way back across the sand. When I glanced towards the sky, I realized sunrise is on its way. So I decided to head back to my hotel room. Wow, so we get like three places we get to decide to go to? It's been an interesting evening, though it was hard to believe my sixth night as a vampire was already ending. Yet here I was, steadily adapting to the new world around me, changing in ways I couldn't yet understand. I returned to my room feeling at least somewhat satisfied, but as I flicked off the lights settling into the cozy darkness of sleep, Somewhere in my mind, an unease began to shift. Uh-oh. Oh, what's happening? Oh, que esta pasando? The cool breeze ran through my hair, drifting across my face. I was on my way to Randall's beach house to meet him and his clan, taking him up on his early invitation. I'd given him a call before I left, so he knew I was on my way. As I approached the house, I noticed a huge braid of footprints in the sand. They led to and from Randall's place by the look of it. Was his number of followers growing? I hadn't seen this many last time. I hope nothing bad happened. Before I ever stepped on the porch, I could hear the loud chatter and laughter of a large group leaking through the windows. But Randall- ugh. You know what? I'm gonna stop her here. <laughs> I'm messing up already, and I think that's gonna be it for my recording sessions. Um, 
but see you next time and i hope you have a nice day bye bye Diplomatic, very diplomatic. Uh, reserved, uh, human-like. Huh, that's interesting. I feel like I always go up and down with this one. I guess it's because I like, when I'm actually interacting with other people for the most part, I do act human-like, but I do drop into the instincts thing because I'm worried about being too human-like to the point that I delude myself. So, can't wait to see how this ends up going. Wait until the next part.